Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our channel at USMLE SRT. We are so excited to guide you on this match journey. Today, Pawan and I are going to talk about the match data from 2024. So results have been in for about a month now, and we're just going to talk about some of the trends, what has changed over the last few years, what changed compared to last year, and hopefully get some insights on what IMGs should be shooting for for the coming seasons. So hello, Pawan. How are you doing? Good, Shaila. And yeah, very interesting data from NRMP and our own Sarthi students. So just let's uh, get started. Okay, so the first chart here, this is just comparing the changes from 2023 to 2024. So the last two cycles, um, the changes of total positions, total filled, you can see that it was slightly up um, over the last year. And we can note that this was the record all-time high of total positions available in the history. So um, that's good. The unfilled positions are down, total percentage of filled positions are up. So always good to know that there's more positions available. We just got to get our students to match in them. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So then this is looking at IMGs, US IMGs and non US IMGs specifically over the last five years. So since 2020, um, the percentage of students that are matching. Um, uh, the red line would be the non-US IMGs and blue line would be US IMGs. So we can see that it's pretty consistent across the board. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, so, you know, this, a lot of students ask us, can I match? And I just, you know, this data uh, shows, uh, you know, your match probability is more than 50%. So, uh, you know, more than one in two, which is actually very achievable compared to, some of the competition you may have in your home countries, et cetera, and seems to be going up or at least, uh, you know, uh, it's not dipped below 50%. Uh, I, I think this chart shows if you pick the right specialty, do the right experiences, then match is a realistic possibility. Absolutely. Okay, so then this would be the trends in available spots by specialty. So we looked at a few of the top IMG friendly specialties that we've been evaluating over the years. Um, and this is from 2020 would be the orange tick all the way to 2024, which would be the blue bar. Um, and so you can see that pretty much across the board, available spots are trending upwards. There's more and more positions. Um, internal medicine is always a topic of interest um, that has increased pretty steeply, probably the most out of all of them, just having the most positions over the last five years increasing. But overall, it seems like either consistent or more positions are becoming available every single every single year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like you said, I am continues to be the bread and butter for uh, mostly IMGs and, you know, more than 10,000 spots were there in 2024. FMP, as you can see, any specialty with more than two, 3,000 spots uh, is a realistic shot, uh, especially IM, FMPs, uh, psych, although it has become very competitive now. And, and surprisingly, neuro and pathology has so few spots, so that uh, makes them very competitive. Right, which we're going to talk about that here on this next slide. So this talks about goes into each of those specifically. So we can see here, we have all those specialties. We have the total available positions, the total that were filled this year, 2024. And then we broke it down by the US IMGs that match, non-US IMGs, and then the percentage fill rates for each of those. So this is really interesting to look at each of those percentages and seeing, like you said, which specialty should IMGs focus on? Which one is going to be more likely to get you, get you a match position? So yeah, which ones do you want to highlight here? Yeah, so in terms of uh, just looking at this kind of chart, you know, IMGs uh, should note that scores is just one criteria. It's a very important criteria. But after scores, you have to start looking at uh, this kind of a chart. What are the total spots which are either filled or available? So more or less, you know, say, let's say internal medicine. Yes, scores are very important, but there are also a very high number of spots 9,767 got filled. So that's one data point you got to look at. Then you got to look at the 
fill rate for depending on your status, US IMG or non US IMG. But overall, if you look at it, uh, non US IMG fill rate, for example, is 31.83%. So if you're a non US IMG, you got a very strong chance in internal medicine, assuming scores uh, are in your favor because the number of spots is also very high. Now, let me take another specialty, take neurology, right? So the non-US IMG fill rate is still very healthy, 23.26. But if you look at the total spots available, it's only 877. So less than one-tenth of internal medicine. And the total, let's say total non-US IMGs were only 204 that matched in neurology as opposed to say 3,109 in internal medicine. So the if the spots are lower, that automatically makes it very competitive. Although of course the match rate in terms of percentage, the fill rate is, is high. So you, you got to you know, look at this in totality. You cannot just look at one versus the other. Pathology is another good example. A lot of IMG students feel it is very easy to match in pathology. Uh, but again, you know, when they say it is easy or easier, they are only talking about scores. Uh, you know, assuming you get the relevant experience, relevant research, and, and scores may be slightly more lenient. I mean, they may be slightly more forgiving in pathology, but, you know, you're still talking only 621 spots out of which non-US IMGs say 171, US IMGs 61. So although the fill rate is still non-US IMG is very high, but look at the number of spots and you then get a sense of uh, competition. So from that perspective, you know, if you look at family medicine, although the fill rate is 15, 16%, uh, number of spots is high. Pediatrics, again, number of spots in about 3,000 or 2,800, a uh, good one. Emergency medicine, and I think we'll talk about it later, uh, the fill rate is only 4.25 if you are a non-US IMG. So you got to look at this entire picture along with your scores. And, you know, if you want to set up time with us for your profile review, this is something that uh, we go over to get you on a realistic path to match. So always look at the total spots available, the fill rate, and then marry it with your profile scores and USCE. Right. I appreciate you pointing all that out. I feel like it's helpful for IMGs to look at all the data points. Uh, psychiatry was another one that was interesting because there are a decent amount of spots, 2,200, but only 8% uh, non-US non IMGs are matching in that one. So like you said, becoming more competitive too. So yeah, yeah. Um, very interesting. Okay. So this is just that um, similar data in a pie chart. So we're just looking at, these are the total field positions all of the specialties, PGY1, um, broken down from MDs, 53%, DOs, 21%, non-US IMGs, 16%, and US IMGs, about 9% um, of the total filled position. So it's just interesting to note, um, obviously still heavily MD, American grad uh, focus, but there's, there's definitely a decent amount of IMGs that are matching too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the total IMGs, it's close to 25%, right? 25.1%. Right one fourth of the total spot. So everyone still has, as an IMG, you have a very decent shot at match for sure. Yes. Right. Okay, so then you did hint at talking about emergency medicine. So emergency medicine was a hot topic last year because there was a whole bunch of open spots. A lot of the AMGs were not going for EM. So we were wondering what happened? Is this a spot, a specialty that IMGs might be able to start going for? Is that a trend? What's gonna happen? So we wanted to look at that data. So um, as you can see, this is from the last five years, the percentage of unfilled positions. Um, so you can see from 2020 up through 2023, last year, 18% went unfilled and back down to 4.4% this last year in 2024. So it seems like the message is that 2023 may have been a fluke year. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I think some of it is the lag effect of covid what happened was during COVID, during those stressful years, 
uh, a lot of people just did not want emergency medicine for obvious reasons, you know, what all the world was going through and also US. And so uh, that spillover effect, I think, continued all of a sudden 2022, you see seven and a half percent unfilled continued in 23, uh, but then suddenly came down to 4.46. So I think it will stabilize. I think the unfilled position will drop again next year. And it is still very heavily an AMG favored specialty. Uh, so if you are an IMG and you do match in internal medicine, I think it's a big achievement. And we have had matches in emergency medicine uh, for visa seeking IMGs. I think uh, we have an interview with uh, that student as well. Uh, it's a big achievement if as an IMG, especially visa seeking, if you can match in emergency medicine. Yeah, for sure. And then the next slide is going to show that as well. Um, so this is the match rates for US IMGs, non-US IMGs, so non in the red and, and IMGs in the blue. Over the last five years, you can see that it is slowly increasing. More and more IMGs are matching in emergency medicine. Uh, this is emergency medicine specifically, but still pretty low. You're you're low below 11%, um, even on the highest. So, Yeah, and especially if you're visa seeking, you are I guess around 4%. So it is increasing, but like you said, still very AMG heavy and not that IMG friendly. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to kind of figure out what happened there. Yep. <laughs> um, that'll be interesting to watch emergency medicine over the years. Um, okay, so that was all of the uh, NRMP data, um, looking at overall positions and match rates. Now we're just going to dive into our specific Sarthi data. So these are some of the students that matched this year, and we just pulled out the data to see what kind of trends we're looking at for this year. So this will be pretty interesting. Um, one of the big topics is visa status. Um, we've talked about that quite a bit. Students always wonder if I'm visa requiring, can I still match? Um, so as you can see, 35% um, or 35% were non-visa requiring, but 64% of our match students were visa requiring. So it's we're definitely heavily visa requiring students still matching. Yeah, this is, you know, again, like you said, a lot of students have this question and our data kind of uh, shows that even if you're a visa requiring IMG, you can match, you know, two thirds almost of our students who matched uh, needed visa. So either H1 or J1. Right. Okay. And then looking at the year of graduation. So again, all of this data is looking at out of our match students. This is what their their results were. So out of our match students, um, you can see 43% had a year of graduation of three years or less. And then out of our match students, 20% were 11 plus years. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at here. Um, so the key points to notice, um, there's about 57% of our students had their year of graduation was three years or, or older than three years. Um, so that's another big question that we get. If I have an old year, can I still match? And majority of our students are over three years and, and still match. Um, so almost 20% were even older than 10 years, uh, YOG. And then our oldest match student this last year had a year, had a, a year of graduation of 27 years. So definitely still a chance for you to match. Oh, absolutely. and. I think you covered the slide very well. I mean, the data already shows. So, you know, if you have less than three years, obviously chances of match are very, uh, are relatively very easy. So 43.5. I think the interesting story is always that 11 plus or 10 plus years of YOG, five plus years, six plus. So you can see that even as older year of graduation, you can match with the right guidance, the right kind of rotations, probably research. And, and that's what I think uh, we pride ourselves on, you know, regardless of your year of graduation, uh, match is a very distinct possibility. Right, exactly. So then um, the, now we're going to look at the step two. So we looked at step two scores specifically, just because the step one has, you know, some people have scores some people are pass fail. So we're just going to look step two specifically because the data will be a little bit easier to read. Um, but this is uh, out of our match students, 15%, um, almost 16% had a step two score below 220. So that's a pretty um, significant amount that are still matching even with a low score. Um, and then you can see that we, we add up 59% um, of our students had a step score even below 240. 
So again, 240 is often that kind of that filter, but we have definitely a large majority of students that are matching even with low scores. Um, yeah, as we've talked about, there's so many different factors besides scores that go into it. Yeah, and, and like you said, you know, uh, different factors, scores are important, but they are not the only factor. You know, if you do the right rotations, research, the right outreach on the right time, good interview preparation, uh, you know, you can have the odds swing in your favor, even with a lower, relatively lower CK score. So, you know, that's good. That definitely gives gives students some help. Okay, and then this is looking at the number of interviews that our students were offered. So again, out of our match students, 15%, almost 16% had two or less interviews. So we always say you just need one interview to match. Um, and that's that shows that's that's exciting that they can match even with two or less. Um, and then 56% of our match students matched with five or less interviews. So you definitely don't have to have a million interviews to, to get a spot. It just depends on your interview preparation and your performance that can get you that spot. Absolutely. You know, you hit the nail on the head. It is about interview preparation. Interviews can be make or break, right? How do you articulate your responses, customize or personalize those responses to demonstrate a fit to that program, fit to that specialty. And like the data shows, even if you had two or less interviews, about 16% of our students uh, matched with two or less. So, you know, that's uh, all about interview preparation. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So it's exciting to see all of this data. So yeah, that's actually everything from us today. It's so exciting to see some of the trends and what happens. We're excited to see a lot of our students that have matched and we look forward to guiding each one of you on your journey. Any last thoughts for us, Pawan? No, thank you. Thank you very much, Shela. And uh, if anyone uh, wants to discuss their profile, uh, you know, feel free to set up time with us. Send us an email. Uh, you know, our website details are here or send us an email and we'll guide you on how to set up time and hopefully get you a good match in the upcoming season. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.